celebration and thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ to us. We thank you above all for the gift of life which have made us possible to come into our presence and to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Give us a heart to accept him into our inn. Give us that heart to walk with him more closely. Give us the heart day by day to accept him and to acknowledge his lordship over our lives. We have asked this to that precious name, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning I want us to reflect on St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. A passage I believe yesterday, or some part of this week, those who attend daily mass, you heard. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother was, after Mother Mary was retorted to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived eh, of the Holy Spirit. And she bring forth a son, you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. For he will save his people from their sins. Beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ, this is my true record of the birth of Jesus Christ. There are other versions, but I want us to dwell on this because. The angel says specifically the mission and the purpose of Christ coming into the world. And that mission says that he will come to save his people from their sins. What does the birth of Christ mean to you today? Christ came, we are told, to come and save us. What went wrong? Something went wrong in the Garden of Eden. When God asked Mr. Adam and Mrs. Adam Eve not to eat the fruit that would lead them into a separation from him, the Ochebiawa missus decided to accept the plea of the serpent or whatever you want to call that animal. And then said, okay, I think your words are very powerful. It's very convincing. Let me taste. So whether it's apple or it's pear or it's orange, she tasted it and it really was sweet in her mouth. And then when Mr. Adam who was far away from her, John, I said, Daddy, Daddy, come, come. Daddy, come. I've had something that is sweet. Come and taste it. Then Adam asked, Did you do what we have been told not to do? So I said, Come and taste it. Come and don't, don't ask me questions. The thing is sweet. Bah. So, as a man who loves his wife, so ah, if they have done it, then the two of us must die together. So, he also ate. But really, the thing is sweet. 
When he saw something happened, their eyes were opened and they realized that they were naked. Hallelujah. So when God saw that they had done what they are not supposed to do, he came down again now to converse with them. Knowing what will happen, he said, Adam and Eve, what are you? Call, 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 didn't respond. But finally, Adam realized that they can't just turn away from him. So we are here. We've hid ourselves because we realized that we're naked. So, so it means truly that what I saw over there is true that you have done it. So it was, uh, uh, you know, not me. Oh, that woman you gave her to me. That woman. So, so God left the man, went to the woman. Woman, why did you do that? Oh, Papa. It is not me, oh, the animal you created, that serpent, that onufu, that snake, came and convinced me to the point that I cannot resist. So I have to taste it. And I tasted it. Okay. I went to the snake. Because God doesn't communicate with animals. As today, some of us, it's in the Western world, we communicate with animals. Animals are our children. We feed them. We leave our property for them. But, but God doesn't communicate with animals. So didn't he ask the animal, that serpent, why did you do that? Then and then he cursed the serpent and came to the woman and said, because you have done this, in pain shall you bring forth to the man your sweat you shall eat. So that love, that uh, union, that friendship that existed between man and God was broken. That brought about the separation. But God in his infinite goodness and mercy promised them that I will restore this relationship to myself. And therefore to the judges and the prophets, God was bringing the people of Israel, is the children whom he has given birth to, to, closer to him. But they will never accept his words of love. And so in the second reading for this morning, Hebrews 1, 1 to 4, the writer says, God through the prophets has been speaking to us we did not hear, but now he has come himself in the form of man. Jesus Christ in earthly ministry told them, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, why do you keep killing the prophets that are, that are sent to you? It's okay. So God decided that if they have killed all the prophets, then let me calm down myself. And maybe through that, they will receive me unto themselves. Beloved, in all this, Christ came, died, and rose, and then sit at the right hand of God. We as human beings are still in our sins. It is even more worse than before. When you look around us in this country, when some of us, young as we were, were growing up, there was fear of God in this country. There was fear of God in this country. To hurt your brother or your sister is very, very difficult. But now, it is quite easy to kill, to destroy I says, I came to save you from your sins. What is Christ's birth to you today? As Christ saved you from your sin or rather you are compounding the problem for Christ. Hebrews says that as we sin, we crucified Christ the more on the, on the cross. Our sins continue to crucify the people of God. Christ has come at Christmas to save us from our sins. 
and we are still wallowing in our sins. The sin of avarice, the sin of greed, the sin of bitterness, hatred, or concern. The sin of unforgiving spirit hovering around us every day of our lives. Today we have come to celebrate Christmas. What is that to you? What is Christmas to you? Has that man come and touched your life? Therefore, there's a renewal of your mind that leads to transformation. Or you are a say on a time we are baptized, confirmed with all the communion. Is there any renewal? Of mind that's a leading transformation of your life that people can testify that Christ has come to save you from your sins, or they say to can I can no near, and they don't even go to church. If it is the way you behave, I don't think I need to go to church. So, because of it, someone that stopped going to church, it can be a suffer, it can be a leader, it can be a member of the guild. Many. I stop going to church. Look at the cathedral. Look at us. This is the cathedral. We don't have any other cathedral anywhere. But because of our ways, our sinful ways, our concerned life, our life that by bites, Christmas Day, the cathedral, some pews are empty. Because he's quarreling with somebody in the guild. The leader. So why should I go and sit there when I could see that person? Look at in front of St. Mary's Guild. That space is there for St. Mary's Guild. That space is left for Trinity Guild. That space is left for Shepherd. Where are they? What is my birth? To you today. That birth of Christ means anything to you at all. He came to save us from our sins. He didn't come that we may enjoy by eating and drinking. He came to save us from our sins. He wants a transformation, He wants a relationship. He reconciled us to God. As Paul says, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And have we been reconciled to God? Can we stand and look at God's face? But we are still in our sins. God expects us to have a relationship with him so that before we call he will answer before we cry he will hear us in the book of Philippians the second chapter and verse 15 Paul said this to the Philippians 2.15 let me read from verse 14 do all things that are complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Do all things that are complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless. Turn of God without fault in the midst of crooked and perverse generation. Christ has come to save us. 
so that we will stand straight. He sees the word as crooked and perverse, but we who are called by his name should live in a way that no one can find any fault with us. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? What is Christ's birth to you? What does it mean to you as a Christian who today you have come to celebrate his birth? What does it mean to you? It says that he wants you to live in this crooked and perverse generation and world today differently from others. You should be blameless. Whatever they say it should never come to pass. He will say it, but it should not come to pass. Because you are a human being. He will say it. But don't let it come to pass. They say that you have to be a light to disperse the darkness of this crooked and perverse generation. Your light will disperse the darkness. Yesterday I went for a confirmation somewhere and I was talking about Matthew 5 and 13 to 16. I was talking about light. And I asked him, what's the opposite of light? What's the opposite of light? Darkness. I see. Can light and darkness stand together? So does light has any opposition? Light and darkness never stand together. Where there is light, darkness flees. So they cannot stand together. The opposite of man is what? Woman. You can see man, you can see woman. But you cannot see darkness and light at the same time. Never. So if you are the light, then there shouldn't be any darkness in you. There shouldn't be any darkness in the place that you operate. Because light and darkness never meets. When light shines, darkness flees. So when you, you are the, a lost in the village in the night, you are only looking for just a gleam of light. And you see a light far away shines in the darkness. So you know that you are getting closer to a life. There's somebody here. The light leads you there. Say, uh-huh. And when you get there, there's no darkness. So as Christians, as Christians, we shouldn't have the darkness in us and we say that we are children of light then we are amali loy we are liars john says that your brother your sister you see you hate him you don't love him then why you don't see you see you love him we are amali loy we are a liar and that's what it is so what christ expects from us is that as he has come to save us, he wants us to be children of light. We should be found blameless. As Paul said in the Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 to 24. Verse 3 he says, you should be blameless at the coming of the Lord. When he comes, he should find you blameless. He should find you blameless. That is what one is expected of us. Second, eh? let's turn to Titus. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men and women. Teaching us that Denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says that if Christ has come, 
Christ has descended to earth and is living like one of us. So I will reconcile us to you. What he expects from us is that one, we should be blameless. But he says that living, we should live soberly. We should live soberly. The spirit of humility and gentleness. Do away with denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. You live soberly. You live righteously. You are a human being. But the, you should make the constant effort to live righteously. For Paul says to the Romans in chapter 8 verse 14 that as many as are led by the Spirit, they are who? The sons and daughters of God. So for you to be able to live soberly and righteously, it is the Holy Spirit that Christ promised you and has given to you that will guide you and lead you to live righteously and soberly. But if you don't have him in you, you will live the way you want. When he appears, he will not count you as one of his. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Hallelujah. Paul said, in the present age, we should not wait. That that tomorrow will come, it's too late. Today, yes, Peter's. So, dear brother, dear sister, my question to you is, what does the birth of Christ Jesus means to you today? Has the birth of Christ done anything to your life? Or year by year you come, celebrate, go and come, and you are the same. St. Paul said to the people of Rome, I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship. Furthermore, do not conform to the standard of this world, but be renewed by the transformation of your mind. May our minds be renewed. May our minds be renewed. May our minds be renewed. That the world will know that we are called the children of God. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we conclude this powerful sermon, may the message accompany you on your Christian journey. Thank you for joining us. And remember to share this message to spread the gospel. Blessings to you all.